Welcome today to the Lily Meadows channel. Today God is going to give us lenses to see clearly where we are. God alone can do that. I am his servant and he will do whatever he's going to do in your heart and life. So as you watch this, know that you, by watching it, are opening your heart to God. If that's not something you're, you're ready to do today, then this probably isn't for you. Amen. Because you don't want to see what it really is. In scripture defines where we are. I'm talking about the false church. I'm talking about Babylon the Great. I'm talking about what calls itself by the name of the Lord, but is not. In the same way in ancient times, Israel was forced, first wanted to, and then forced to conform to the religion of the Gentiles and worship their gods. And if they weren't, they were killed. In the book of Maccabees, in the history of the Jewish people, that's happened often. Daniel and the golden statue and all these things, we know. Nothing changed in regard to that concept. Certain things remain what they are. Through all time, truth remains. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remains our creator. Regardless of what people think about that, regardless of anything. He is the creator and that never changes. Amen. He does reward those who diligently seek him and he knows who you are when you seek him. Amen. I mean, think about if you made a little train world and the little people on it were lifting up their hands to get to know you. What are you like? Maker of the train world? What can I do to serve you? Well, very few ever do that. And when they do, those around them in the train world begin to single them out because they become a danger to the status quo. The status quo is the wide gate that leads to destruction. Many there be that go there. Jesus said that 2,000-ish years ago. So we have a reality of always and in every time period, the masses of humanity are going the wrong way. Whatever they think as a whole group, what they perceive to be true, is what they think is true. Today, with the media and black box that has a consistent message and has for 50 years, maybe, you know, a consistent message continually sprouting from the branches therein, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A message that continually sprouts and it becomes this unified message into 2024 when we have a perception of life. The masses have a perception of life based on what they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Whether they hate government control, whether they want the government to control them. However, whatever side of the coin on different issues people fall. It's still their perception of life and their argument with the other side of the coin that is perpetual. If we want to break out of that, which we're going to have to, because that's all blindness. That's like walking in a circle in a room with no light. You, you figured it out in your own mind and you're just going around and around, but you'll know that it, it, there's an emptiness in there when you do that. We need something solid, something true. We need something to stand on. People create their own um, rocks to stand on, whether it's their own perception of themselves. However, each person is very different, but the concept is the same. If you create, for example, like a house of cards around your life, anybody who blows, you get real mad at. Because you don't want anything, have you ever been around people like that? You don't want anything, they don't want anything to threaten their apple cart. They just want it to keep going as it is. They don't want anything to come and, and alter their perception because they've got it figured out and they don't want anything to, you know, blow on that because it is so precariously built like a house of cards. 
they know that it's precarious and so they have to protect it. Those are people who are very sensitive about what you say, sensitive about everything, high sensitivity. I mean, that's like being hooked to electrodes and constantly being shocked, you know what I mean? Because you're never gonna, people are never gonna ascribe to you the way you want them to, no matter who you are. So if you're building your life on that, it's a, it's going to be a constant electrocution, you know, upsettedness. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a constant, oh, 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 don't, don't, you know, to protect your perception of life. There's also a false version of Jesus Christ that the devil initiated in the same way there were in the history of the Jews there were people who came in and began to alter the religion from the truth, subtly. But the people who stood for the truth stood. And when they called upon God, the other ones got washed away to sea, spiritually. Like as they rose up, they just went away. But when they had their own religion about God, but it wasn't God, they were easy to manipulate. Because when you have a concept thought of a religion, this is good, this is bad. This is allowed, this is not allowed. Divorce, no. Drinking, no. Only in these circumstances. And you make up your own parameters. Well, it's easy to manipulate that because as soon as you don't fit within your parameters, you can widen your parameters since they're created by you. But what if, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery with her in your heart? Jesus said, that's a whole nother thing. That's a, oh, um, I repent, I repent. Does that make sense? It's a whole nother, because it's the truth. And the truth will set you free in that no one can come and alter your truth. No one can alter your perception of your religion if you know God. And when you know God, you are a threat to all of those that are holding their house of cards. So let's say <clears throat> that there's a congregation of people somewhere in the, on the earth. In this congregation of people, most of them have a house of cards. Let's say the pastor has an experience with God. He has caught away and in an experience with God, which happens is, is knowing God. It's just being a child of God. It's the Bible, all of the Bible. It speaks of that. And it wasn't just written for those people. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. Right? Well, God is who he is. He is. He's that way with all of us. He wants to give you experiences with him. He really does. Let's say this pastor has an experience with God, but the whole time that church was there, they did not believe God speaks today. You just read the Bible and don't drink. And you can look at all those sinners out there and judge them. Oh, they're disgusting gay people. Oh, look at them. Oh, 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 you know, and you get all, right? But what if the pastor comes and says, I had an experience with God that we need to, we need to repent because we're doing the wrong thing in this church. Oh, oh. All of a sudden, you see all these people put their hands up to their house of cards. Get out of here, pastor. He must have drank something funny. Get out of here. And he's gone. Right? Well, so what you're telling me, Lily, so what I'm telling you, whoever you are, whenever you're listening, whoever would listen, and that's a testimony. That Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. And that won't be able to hold your... When the Lord comes in, like a mighty rushing stream, which the wind of the Lord drives in Isaiah, your house of cards is gone. Anything not built on the rock is gone. A religion about the rock is gone. The rock himself is the only thing standing at the end. Okay? So your perception of life has to comply with the rock himself. And that's what he wants. God creator sent his son Jesus Christ that we might know him. He died on the cross so we could be forgiven because all of us fall short. We all know that. We all have a house of cards. And we need him to 
protect us from ourselves, our own heart, our own perception. And he will then save you and lift you out from the consequences of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. At that time, most people go back to chomping on that tree. That's good. That's evil. Drinking, evil. Gay, evil. Republican, good. Do you see what I'm saying? Like you have all these different parameters that you create on your own. That's good and that's evil. That's what the tree was. Humans deciding what is good and evil. Every single person is going to stand before the judgment seat of, God, of Christ. Every single person will stand before God. He's not going to look at what all the world thought at that time and how you perceived life based on that. He's going to look at you and how you responded to him as the truth. Did you create? And he'll forgive you. If you ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you. Amen. But why not do that today? And I am too. And this is a reality. Why not ask him to cleanse us today, even of our perception? And allow him to blow, to burn your drop, to blow on your life. And just look, just say, God, I'm coming to you as a child. It's the only way to enter the kingdom. There are big pearly gates, beloved. They're golden. And most of the people who think they're going to be... on it, you know, honored in a parade when they get there, don't even, aren't even going in. Because it's not a perception of greatness that gets you to the place, your own greatness, your own religion, your own ability to maintain your own parameters and stay righteous within those. The only way to be righteous is by the blood of Jesus Christ and coming to him as a little child, giving him your life, and just coming to him and saying, what would you have me learn today, Lord? And then you'll begin to grow and then you'll mature. But you're not even going to start that process until you're ready to let your cows of cards wash away by the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you it's painful in that you're going to realize all the things you thought were important really aren't. I was deleting old emails the other day. And all these things that seemed so important at the time just delete. doesn't matter at all to my life anymore. And it brought me some more reality about how much heart we put into the momentary things. The Bible is clear about that. That we're to focus on the unseen things. Amen. And that's what we're going to do as we proceed forth in the kingdom of God as a little child coming before God. Now, if you're still listening to me, and your heart is open to God, you're ready to go into the kingdom. If your heart is open before God, I don't know why else anyone would ever watch this. Like, why would someone care about my life and what I'm doing, you know, or worry about if I'm saying the wrong thing? That's silly. Right, you see? Like, why would any, so in my mind, why would anyone ever watch this unless you're looking for God? And so I'm going to proceed on that premise because I can't understand why anyone would find interest in this little offering to God unless you're, you're going to ask him, right? You're asking him, look, I want to lay down my perception and get yours, right? And I'm doing that too. So I'm not coming to you proclaiming you know anything. Even Paul said, I don't come to you proclaiming you know anything except Christ and him crucified enough then every day he will fill in the blanks but if you've got your blanks filled in you're walking like a dead person marching off a cliff really I'm sorry and most people are and most people want to listen <clears throat> excuse me to a message like this because it blows on your house of cards to the point where your house of cards won't be standing if you keep listening amen and I welcome you who, who would live like that, who would, I promise you, beloved, it's your, it's your ticket into the kingdom because you can't enter the kingdom of God unless you be like a little child. What a little child like. Okay, sure, mama, whatever you say. And they'll just go with God. Go with God, not, not any other people, but God. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Now we are going in to what we're what we're doing. This is Revelation chapter 12. And this is what he told me to be. So we've got a couple more pretty heavy reads. So we're going in. If you want to um, get a perception from the Bible that might solidify where we are. I am telling you that the woman is the church through time. Not the people who go to church. It's not the same, okay? The people who go to church are a religion, just like Buddhist. And, I mean, they're all just a religion. All religion is made up by man. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Except what is Jesus Christ himself, okay? Most of the time in our time period <clears throat> and for centuries, What happens there does not welcome Christ. What happens in churches does not welcome the real Jesus. Most of the time. Or we would have a completely different life on this planet if we really sought God. But we seek often religion. We seek self-justification and human parameters that we can fit within on our own terms. You can click off any time. You know, it's, this isn't for you then. If, if, that, if that isn't, you know, it's just what it is. I mean, I'm going to read you. So the woman in the dragon, the woman is the church, not the people who go to church in a religion, okay? Not everybody who goes to McDonald's is a hamburger, people used to say. You know what I mean? Like, you can go but not be it. It's about what people are inside. That's what's confusing. I think a lot of times is when I was a young Christian, I was so shocked when people would hurt my feelings in the church and that they would hate me and I never understood. I mean, I still don't and it still breaks my heart, but I'm not shocked anymore because I understand that often the Antichrist spirit proclaims itself to be the Christ and is inside of people just like Christ is in some people. The Antichrist is in other people. Some will be left, some will be taken. Does that make sense? Some are have oil and some do not have oil. The same, they're looking for the same bridegroom, but they are different in their waiting and in their life before him. The woman is in the labor to bring forth through time. Not everyone who goes to church is this woman, but those who dedicate their lives to God with all of their our heart. It's so simple. Anyone who says to God, your will be done, not mine. Your will is my life. Please do whatever pleases you in my life. Whatever happens, I don't require anything from you for it. I just give my life to you, God. Just use me. And he will, like Joan of Arc, like other people that had to stand up and say what you are doing is wrong. And we're often martyred for it. That's who God calls. If you look at the Bible, that's what the Bible is. Repent, repent, you know, throughout the whole thing. Right? It takes courage and guts to speak on God's behalf. Because you'll, your life will be over, especially in history. If you do that, you will have a short life, right? A lot of times, people who stood and spoke for God blew on the house of cards of somebody with a big sword, a king or a religious leader. Jesus, that happened to Jesus. You know the day after they killed God, they had a sermon <clears throat> in the temple, the Passover, the day after they killed God, they stood there right, ripe as a prune, given the serpent, just ready to serve God. But they killed God the day before and didn't even know it. So we can be deceived, and that is the lawless one that is revealed today. The woman has to, through time, stand against the lawless one. The woman 
had to stand against the lawless one. And so he, so the, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant, was crying out in birth pains, and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great dragon with seven heads and ten horns. So you're saying that being a Christian, being a true Christian is painful in the agony of giving birth. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to go against the grain of the norm in any time period. That's true. Because the, the norm is the masses of people going along in the gray of the timeline. They don't pop up. They just live and die within the norm of their time period, the gray of the timeline. They live, they die, it's over, you know, through time. Masses and masses, huge percentages of all, of all mankind have lived in the gray of their timeline, whatever, wherever they lived. They stayed within the parameters of theirs. But there were some who, and that we don't know them all, of course. God knows, though. He knows the old lady praying for the Messiah, Anna, in the temple, who then saw Jesus and the old man. He and the member, the widow who prayed day and night for the Messiah, and there she saw baby Jesus. We know about her. We know about so many. <clears throat> but there's but trillions we don't know about. Maybe not trillions. I mean... Maybe it's not as many as we think because the cost is so high that few there be that find it. The narrow way. How about you be one of those that find it? I promise you that you will, if you're hearing me and I'm hearing you, and if we will go even deeper into God and deeper into the narrow way and just say, God, I know I'm not popular. I know people don't like me. Because they won't. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you listen to Jesus, they didn't want him. Are you better than your master? No, as they treat him, they'll treat you. I'm sorry. But who cares? Because what are they? We're talking about in 5,000 years from now. I don't know where they will be. They might be in heaven because of you. Or they might not be, but it's not on you. So everyone has a free choice. But where is Stephen? It's 2,000 some years later, 2024 plus, I don't know, maybe minus four, I don't know. Where is he now? Is he glad that he gave his all for the Lord? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Where are the Sanhedrin now? I know they could have got saved, I don't know. But the point that I'm making to you is that much is the clay that the earthen vessels are made of, but little of the earth is the gold. It is up to you. Everyone will be accountable. Everyone will stand before Jesus and give account. Everyone. And now that you've heard this, you know you're <clears throat> accountable. Maybe that's why it's just hidden right now, you know. That that's a high level of accountability. But the the bride has made herself ready. She is clothed in fine linen, which is the righteous acts of the saints. Even this message is a righteous act. He asked me to do it. I feel the hatred, I know it's not popular. But he asked me to do it. And here I am. There's nothing that can stand against God. And if he asked you to do something, just do it. You will blow their house down. You will huff, you will puff. You will blow their house down. They will hate you. But you will stand before God. What's more important? Do people like you and you fit in the gray timeline dress? The gray of the timeline? You stay just like everybody else? Or you live for your maker, which is more important to you. Well, if you're still listening to me, you've obviously chosen to poke your head up at least to listen. Well, keep 
looking for him every day of your life. Keep looking. And then what you'll see is a lot of, oh my God, end time. When you read the New Testament, You think, wow, the last day will be rough. Haters of God, lovers of self. And now when you see it, it's like, oh my God, whoa. Most of what is done in his name isn't remotely him. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. And isn't God, what is it then? And, and where are we? It's hard for, for the children, the childlike faith people to go to church because we don't want to hear some... Guy puking up his leftovers spiritually. Like, we don't want to hear that. We want God. We just want God, you know? I don't want to follow some guy dressed nice or dressed skinny jean or what, however they come across. I, we don't want to follow a guy. I want, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. And maybe it will come to a time period where Jesus will come and everybody will fall on their face. And there isn't that one one man show which grew over the church like Katsu, the doctrine of the Nicolaitan. That's what that is. I mean, you could click off. There is a, there's a little red button. It says end video. I'm sure it's somewhere. You can click it anytime you want. I mean, you know, go ahead. It's all it's all it's all good. I mean, it's all you. You choose what you want to do. I don't care. I just care, and I'm talking to you ministers. We have to just care about serving God. If people don't like what he says through you, what he sits you down to speak, whatever. <laughs> right? We're blowing on their cards. They don't like it. But who do we serve? This day, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And God will protect us. Amen? Amen. Well, so the woman is pregnant. She's, Christ is being formed in her through time. The, the woman who gave her life to God. Do you understand that's Christianity? That's the true thing. Those who give their life to God and live like a little child before him. We have no defined parameters of our own. We let him define them, which means we're subject to a great king and his desire over our lives. We can't just do whatever we want, think whatever we want, Say whatever we want. Hate whatever we want. Anymore. But the love of Christ controls us. And the mind of Christ is in us. As he is formed in us. And you know what I mean? If you know what I mean. And anyone's welcome. He said, I knock and open the door. If any man or woman hear my voice. And open the door. Like you can do right now. And share this message. If you're like. I will come in and eat with him and be with him. So that means Jesus is with you. Well, when the real Jesus is with you, it's better than anything. It's better than anything. It's a life. It's a life. And we don't have our own parameters. We barely know what we are anymore because we just live like little children before him and let him define everything through his word, through his heart. And as we begin to then see we are labor and pain to bring forth. Our own sin is being purged. We're being burned by the fire that will consume the whole earth. Our wood, hay, and stubble is burning off of us as we allow him to cleanse us. I counsel you to buy me gold tried in the fire that you may be clothed. So if we're not go laboring and praying and Asking for mercy for our own sinful desires and nature, which is a constant struggle. As we do that, he comes to cleanse us. And he says, come, be with me, and I will be with you. And nothing is like that. But when you live with fire, you're going to get burned. And then your wood, hay, and stubble will burn up in your life. So all that gossip and hatred and judgment and... Um, lust and all this stuff burns up in his presence because we're convicted of our sin in his presence, right? If a great if if a great president that you respected was in your house 
Everything would look different. Oh, that's a little dusty. Everything you wouldn't notice before a great king or president came into your home, all of a sudden you'd notice a lot more things that they might see and then you want to clean it up, and right? Well, that's how life with God is. And most people don't want that. That's why the norm is just stay within the timeline because if I can think in my mind what's good and bad, then I don't have to redefine my life or perception. I can just think whatever I want day in and day out and judge and condemn and decide what's right content or not right content on this news channel or this news channel, all that. Sure, everybody else doing that, you can do that too. That's fine. I mean, you can. And you can still get saved. At the very end, you could say, oh, Jesus, let your blood. I'm so sorry. You could cry with real tears. I'm sorry. Anybody who really repents, God will save. I don't understand exactly his parameters because once you get saved, it's, I don't know, you know, the Bible does say that once you're saved and turn away from God, you can't get saved again. So I'm not, I'm not putting that on you. If you can hear my voice, I pray God, obviously, listen to me. If you're listening 31 minutes into this video, God is having mercy on you, beloved, I promise you. God is my witness. So that's not you who can't get saved again. Because you're listening. Dude, you're listening for 31 minutes. Whoever you are. That means your heart is willing to accept that I am not the definer of my life. I will let him define it. Well, if you can come to that place, beloved. Welcome. To life in God, right? So then you're <clears throat> saved. People can get saved on their deathbed. And they go to heaven, but they don't have anything to bring with them. What if you turn to God now? And I promise you I'm giving you the path that you will thank me, will hug me in heaven for. If anybody ever watches this and, and finds this path because of this message, you can share it. And then the fruit will be yours. Whoever finds it because you shared it, God is just. Whoever finds this. And takes that path, you'll hug me. You know why? Because you'll be clothed in heaven. I don't know what the naked people have on in heaven. But his bride, you, the woman, crying out in labor to bring forth Christ in you. He's being formed in you, which means you're moving like clay. Your perception, your sinful nature has to be burned away. It has to be transformed into the image of God. We were made in the image of God in his design is to transform us deeper into the image through our own free will because God has free will. And so he had to give us that free will to get us actually in his image and after his likeness, which is the whole point. Most of the people live and die in the timeline and never even conceive of such a thing. They just live down in the train world without once looking up and lifting up their eyes to the creator. Well, you're obviously looking up to him if you're watching this. Amen. And he's looking down to us saying, let me define your parameters, beloved. And I'm going to tell you something. You will have someone to back you up all the time. Everywhere you go, you're going to have somebody to back you up. He's got your back like your spine. Amen. There's some lyrics. He can do it. He can do it. And he will prove himself faithful. You will walk through the storm, but he will prove himself so faithful that you will begin to recognize and interact with your creator, who will then begin to reveal himself to you as you show that you really mean it. You sweat and you keep going and you don't just quit. They don't like you, but you keep going and you don't just quit. They throw stones at you, but you keep going and you don't quit because you know your maker is your husband. Your maker is not just some external God that all those other religions have, even false Christianity has some distant God. No, 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 he is in you and you're crying out in birth pains until he, he is brought forth. Amen? That is eternal. So whatever clothes you get, the bride has made herself ready. She was granted to clothe herself because she chose to follow Christ. Clothe herself. 
in fine white linen, which is the righteous acts of the saints. You just keep get up and do what he asked you to do and get on your face every day and say, I belong to you. Please purify my heart. Search me and know if there be any wicked way in me and there be a wicked way in you and me. And we have to acknowledge that. He will then begin to purify us and we're crying out in intercession for the earth because we begin to love like him. So when we see animals being abused, whales getting caught in nets, children caught in slavery, all these horrible things, we begin to intercede. We're laboring and crying out as in birth pangs, right? We're not living some easygoing life like on a cruise ship, Christianity. That's a bunch of people getting a bunch of ship ready that's never going anywhere. Except hell. It's not anything. It's a fake religion, just like Buddhism. It's the same. Same false gods rule that place. And you can see in the book of Revelation with the mystery Babylon, that's how it works. If you want to go on the gray of the timeline, that's what you're, you're going to find, the false gods. Because the false gods make it easy to follow them. For the most part, right? All you have to do is do whatever you want. <laughs> that's easy. That's wide. It's easy there. Wide is the gate. And easy is the way that leads to like, chill, man. Just ride this raft. Why are you still talking, Lily? Shut up. I was very happy on my raft. La, 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 la. Well, there's a huge monster about to swallow you. Have a nice journey, you know? That's okay if that's what you want. <laughs> or you can wake up and say, God, you, you created me. You don't have to take my word for it. Ask him. Be like, God, that weird lady said, I could come to you. Are you real? If you're real, I, I want to know it. And then help me serve you, God. You open the door. You heard his voice. This is his voice. No. Hello. Can I come in? He says to your life. You're still listening. He's coming in. Thank you, Lord. So the woman, but she's, she's crying out in great pangs, birth pangs, in the agony of giving birth. Through time, the church has been doing that. And while she's doing that, and another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven. You mean there's spiritual warfare going on? What? Yes. The woman's crying out. The dragon is trying to devour what she's birthing. Right? His tail swept a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, it might, he might devour it. So the enemy, the devil, wants to devour my ministry? Yes. He's tried so many different angles and ways to do that. But I'm talking about your ministry. If you put your head up out of the timeline, you're listening to this weird lady, whatever. It doesn't matter what you think of me. What matters is, are you going to put your head up and say, God, if you're real, I want to serve you. I want to know a real God. I'm tired of a religion about you. I'm tired of Buddhism or whatever religion you, you ascribe to. I'm tired of a distant God that I don't really know what the parameters are. I can create them myself, but I don't feel safe. Are you going to cry out to God and say, I'm willing to serve you, God? Here am I. A clay pot. Use me. Mold me. I'm going to make myself soft clay instead of that hard clay that I've already figured it out. I'm soft clay. The potter will move on you with his hands with love. He loves you. I mean, the whole purpose of this is to show his love for you. The whole purpose of this. Because then you will be developed into the thing you'll be proud of later and you'll have some clothes on. I don't know what the naked people wear in heaven. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> right? I think people can get there that were not given to clothe themselves. They didn't want to clothe themselves. And they did not. I counsel of you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. 
that you may be clothed. Jesus said that. Well, first of all, it's your decision. Jesus counsels us to make that decision, just like Lily is counseling you to make that decision. It's your decision. If you decide that, you will be clothed. You have to go through the fire, but you'll be clothed. Well, what about in heaven? Will you like your clothes in heaven? You can't go to the Sears catalog, to the mall, to the Amazon or whatever to buy clothes in heaven. You have on. What you die with is what you have on. I think there's some sort of special clothes that he puts on people who were not clothed. But how about? How about it? How about you decide, I still have time left in my life. Clothe me, God. I'm crying out to you. And I mean it. And mean it. And then stick with him. He loves you. He will prove himself faithful to you beyond a shadow of a doubt. I promise. Because he is faithful. And you feel his presence right now to affirm he's drawing you. He said, I counsel of you to buy me gold, try in the fire that you may be clothed. So he's saying, I think you should listen to Lily. I think you should pop your head up to me. And then just go after me. Jesus, go after Jesus. Because now what happened when this big, ugly dragon tried to steal my ministry, tried to steal your ministry, tried to take what I'm birthing from me? Well, what I'm birthing, what all through time, Christianity, the true Christians that live like I, I've described here, are birthing. Um, <clears throat> she gave birth to a male child, <clears throat> one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, it's Jesus. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, in which she will be nourished for 1,260 days. I don't really know what that means. It's all, you know, it's a mystery. But the reality of God is such that there's a woman and there's a dragon. And God will take to himself what you offer him. So let's say you're, you want to live your life for God. Let's say you decide now, okay, I want to live my life for God. I want to do that. I, I feel Holy Spirit's knocking and, and I want to let Jesus in. Really let him in. Do it. Just say, Jesus, come in. I, I, I want to buy of you gold shine in the fire. I'm going to the store. Please strengthen me to live the life you call me to live. Make me honorable before your sight. Be glorified and show me your love. In the name of Jesus. And then whatever you birth out of your life, like this video, it's caught up to God and to his throne. And it glorifies God. Maybe he wears this video, the whatever I taught in it, this heart that he's releasing, maybe he wears it like a, like a diadem on his robe. Maybe this video is one tiny little of those infinite number of stars in his robe. Somebody told about me, and I liked it, so I'm going to wear it as a robe. What if you could please your creator and you can't. He's wise. Guys, come on. If you ran an army, would you just let anybody in? Or would you prove and test them that they can go rescue those children? You see what I'm saying? You have to be proven and tested. God is wise. So when you comply and yield to him, give him your house of cards. Just blow them all down yourself. Whatever you think about life, whatever you think about religion or Christianity or your church or whatever, just lay it down before him and then let him build it. And you might, I'm sorry, but you might be disappointed that the church isn't exactly like you wished it was. I know that happened to me over the many years. And it was a slow process of heartbreaking. And she labored to bring forth. She, in the agony of giving birth. Okay. Well, I want to be clothed. I want to be clothed. So I'm going to go through it, try in the fire. Maybe I'll share his sorrow. Right? And born his grief. 
if he if he feels sad, wouldn't you if you're his servant? I mean, Ezekiel did. Hosea did. He had to marry a prostitute to feel how God felt. He felt sad. You know, whatever. Well, where is Hosea now? Where are those people who hated him back then? Do you see what I'm saying? They're still, they're still alive. All of us will still be alive forever. Thank you for your time. God, we pray that you will bless each person and give us all the strength to pop our head out and say, we want to serve you, God, whatever the cost. We lay down our own perception of our Christianity. We lay down our perception of everything. And we come to you as little children. Open wide those pearly gates and help us live to serve you. Why were all your disciples and then became apostles? Why were they all martyred? We don't really understand that. Why that would bring you glory. But we still receive who you are, even though we don't understand you in our mind. But we want to know you, God. Reveal yourself to us that we might please you as your creations. We are the little ones in the train world lifting up our hands and saying, we are here to serve our maker. And you hear that and respond to everyone. In the name of Jesus, thank you for your time. I know God will bless you. Just be brave. Be brave, beloved. It's going to be okay. Once you, once you get this courage from God, it has to come. I promise you. I even said this morning when I was getting ready, I said, God, may it be written in the Chronicles somewhere that I could have never done this if you didn't strengthen me. But I'm going to tell you a secret. That is the greatest pleasure you'll ever have. Is when you have to face the giant or the, the trouble or the lion's den or whatever. You have God. And he's the fullness of life and he loves you. And that is worth it all. I promise. I promise. You won't be sorry for listening to me and I hope you come and hug me in heaven and say thank you. Because the step, the path is only a step away. Jesus is only one step away from you. All you have to do is make one step to him. And you're already on the path. And then you have to humble yourself every day and just, he'll show you his love for you. And that's the fullness of life. Then this empty screaming abyss inside you will be gone. And you'll be full of life. And even though the world may not like you and you're not like them, You know who loves you. And he's more powerful than all of them put together in a big pile. Amen? So be encouraged and follow God until the last breath that you take. Follow God and let him be glorified. And together we say, Amen.